where broadband try to capture as much light as possible. Narrowband filters are exactly the opposite. We shoot extremely thin lines and you would often have a hydrogen, a sulfur and an oxygen filter. So they would just have very narrow peaks just around those bright lines. So this means now we are able to capture those bright lines and filter everything else out. All the other data just goes away. The benefit of using this is that you can shoot under very, very heavy light pollution. I've successfully shot pictures like the one shown on screen here on a parking lot full of street lamps. There was so much light pollution in that area, but because I was using these extremely thin in narrow band filters, I was able to just shoot through that light pollution and get some decent images out of it. Anyway, not all narrow band filters are created equal. The peaks can have different widths. I think you can get seven, five and three nanometers. So that's basically how wide is the peak. Seven is gonna be wider than the five, five is gonna be wider than the three. I usually shoot with three. Those are also the most expensive filters, but the narrower the peak, the more that the light around it is gonna be filtered away. Emission nebulas or supernova remnants is where these filters excel. Because these targets emits a lot of light in these three bands, we can easily use these filters without losing out on too much data as the majority of the data is emitted in those three bands.